Hello and welcome. In this video, I will show you how to configure Dextrude Mutate to measure the quality of our test code. I will assume that you already know what mutation testing is and that you have installed Dextrude Mutate. During this demonstration, we are going to use LZ4, which is a compression library project. It's an example program to mutate. The reason for this is that I find it to have a stable and interesting test suite, which only takes a few seconds to execute. So let's go ahead and fetch it. Since this is the first time we use Dextool, we need to create a configuration file. We use the Dextool muted admin init command to generate an initial configuration. This file contains quite a few options that we can configure, but for now we will stick to answering the three basic questions required by Dextool. Which code do we want to mutate? How do we build the program and the tests? And how do we execute our test suite? We can see that the root option currently points to the root folder of our project, so from there we can start to look for the source code. I took the liberty to prepare this step and already know that the source code is contained within the folder named lib. So let's put this information into the configuration file. Now that we know what code we want to mutate, we can move on to how to build a program. Uh, this part can be quite tricky as Textual needs to know uh, what compiler flags to use for each analyzed file. Fortunately, we can use Bear to automate this step by allowing it to listen to the compiler while it builds the program. This information is automatically stored in the compile commands file, so let's put that into our configuration file. The next step is to show Dextool how to build the program along with the tests. In this demo, we store this information in a simple bash script. It's important that this script contains both how to build a program which LZ4 does by using the make command, along with how to build the tests, which in the LZ4 case is done by the make build tests. To avoid the interactive prompt that shows up when rebuilding LZ4, we throw in the make clean command as well. Let's give it a try and see if the script worked. Seems like it worked. Now we move on to the final step to configure how to execute the tests. If the tests are complex, you might need to create a bash script to execute them, much as we did for building. 
but LZ4 is conveniently set up to execute the tests by running the make check command. So we put that straight in the configuration file. The configuration is now complete and we are ready to start the mutation testing. First, we need to generate a database of all mutation points, and this is done by running the dextool mutate analyze command. The mutation points are stored in an SQLite database. Let's run mutation testing and take a look at the report. There are a number of mutation operators to select, but for now I'll just pick two to show you how it looks. Let's go with LCR and SDL. This step will take a while. Fortunately, Dex will have some nice features that continuously save the progress. So if it gets aborted for some reason, most of the progress is saved. Let's skip ahead to when the mutation testing is complete. Now the mutation testing is complete. Let's generate a HTML report to see what we detected. This is how the report looks like. The color coding makes it easy for the programmers to identify problematic sections of the code. The green colors signify mutants that have been killed, red show mutants which are still alive, and yellow signify mutants that have not been evaluated. This could occur if the report is viewed before the mutation testing is complete. Much more can be said about the report, but this introduction will not go further into the specifics. I hope this video has provided guidance on how to use Textual Mutate. Thank you for watching.